I speak to you in the name of God who created magnificently, died violently, yet rose unexpectedly. Amen. Please be seated. You idiot, said Jesus. You fool. This very night your life is being demanded. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up possessions and treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. The wardens will now receive your offers. <laughs> Just kidding, of course. Just joking. But here's a serious question. Why did Jesus even need to tell this parable? He gives the punchline before the story. The passage virtually begins with these words. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. That's the punchline. And then Jesus goes on to tell the parable. We might expect at this point, since the punchline has been already given, we might expect at this point that we will hear a story that will prove Jesus' point. A story about someone who is very selfish, a story about someone who is very greedy. But the man in this story is not a bad man. There is no hint that he acquired his land illegally or that he had exploited his workers. Jesus says nothing about this man having usurped the land of the poor in order to raise coffee or cotton to export. Just this one straightforward sentence. The land of the rich man produced abundantly. The rich man's land produced abundantly. Now some of the crowd might have been saying to themselves, then this proves that this man was a faithful man. He was a good man because the Lord provided and gave to him an abundance of possessions, an abundance of crop. Deuteronomy 30, from the Old Testament, it reads this, You shall again obey the Lord, observing all his commandments that I am commanding you today. And if you do that, the Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all your undertakings, in the fruit of your body, in the fruit of your livestock, stock, in the fruit of your soul, soil. So the people who heard Jesus' parable as he began to launch into it would have thought this surely is a devout and faithful man because God has blessed him with abundance. And Jesus doesn't point out any sinful behavior in this man. It seems like he's a good man. It seems like he's actually a shrewd man. Because of his abundance, he begins to rethink. One of the ways to get into a biblical text is to note words or phrases that are repeated. In this parable, Jesus lets the landowner speak for himself. Listen to this. What should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And I will store my grains and my goods. What should I do? I always like when people come in during the sermon rather than leave. It's a very good sign. <laughs> what should I do? 
I will do this, I will pull down, I will build, I will store, I, 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 I. <laughs> this man's world is so small that he's just speaking to himself, he's only talking to himself. He's only asking one question, what should I do? He's only thinking of himself, he's not thinking of anyone else. He answers his own question. These are my crops, these are my barns, this is my grain, these are my goods. He has no connections beyond himself. He has no memory of God, he has no memory of his neighbor. He has no memory of the commandments that God had given about leaving grain at the edges of the fields so that the poor, the sojourners, and the widows could have food to eat. He forgets that. He can't see beyond the edges of his own fields, his own world. The man's isolated. He's created a world for himself. The land is his, the barns are his, the grain is his, the goods are his. He has no neighbor, he has no need of God. The only words in this passage that sound like prayer are the words of the man almost praying to himself, right? He says, soul, soul, I said to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many, many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But there would not be many years for him. There wouldn't even be one more morning. You fool, said God. You idiot. This very night your life is being demanded of you. God didn't call this man a fool because he was productive, but because the man was selfish and lived inside his own distorted world that he had created for himself. My barns, my crops, my grains, my goods. Congratulating yourself and praying to yourself even is just not enough. The following Jesus calls us beyond ourselves to think of the outside. And following Jesus usually has economic repercussions. This whole section in the Gospel of Luke, last week's story, the stories before, and the stories that will follow, are all about the very odd and curious economy of God. God's economics are very different from human economics. God's economics are about generosity. They are about the other. They are about kindness. And Jesus summarizes this whole section by this one word, this one phrase rather, for where your treasure is, you know it, there will your heart be also. You can't read very far into the Bible without bumping into God's understanding of economics. Wherever Jesus went, he called people beyond the M words, the my words, the my crops, the my grain, the my barns, the my RRSPs, the my car, the my possessions, the my stock options. This is a parable for us. Like the seagulls in Finding Nemo. Mine, mine, do you remember them? Mine, 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 mine. No, that's not Christian. That's not us. It's ours, ours, or even better, yours, 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 yours. When I was rector of uh, St. Matthew's some 10, 15 years ago, we received an inheritance of three quarters of a million dollars. You should have seen the dollar signs in the warden's eyes. Everyone was so excited. There was so much glee about this wonderful gift. All things were going to be done, but then it was decided by the wardens that no, it was going to be invested, laid up for future. When we actually had current ministry needs, 
So the rector, me, read them this story of the bigger barns. Not popular. I didn't win out the whole argument. Half the money was invested for the future. Fair enough. But we did also invest immediately in current ministry. We needed to serve people now. The money wasn't ours, it was for others. The people of St. Matthew's were really good people. They were not bad people at all. We're just used to a kind of economics that seeks to preserve rather than an economics of God that seeks to be generous. They were not bad people. We are not bad people. We all know that we can be greedy and selfish and ungenerous and miserly at times. There's a little bit of Scrooge, maybe, in all of us, sometimes. I'm not looking at anyone in particular, but I think so. I know there is a me. Jesus knew that God's economics would be very difficult for people. And seeing beyond our own self-interest has become even more difficult in this day and age. I and my are more popular pronouns than we and ours. The good news in the story is that Jesus is offering us abundance. He's challenging us to see beyond our own borders, beyond our own worlds, beyond our own fields or bank accounts and investments. Jesus isn't trying to scare the hell out of us. He's just trying to give us a vision of what real abundance truly is. Amen.